Welcome to another teardown video. This time it is another scope. Teal equipment. S54A. This is a one channel scope. And this is S for single, I guess. Because there is a D for dual. And of course that one got two channels. Uh, I believe this design is from 1968 and it should also contain a few tubes and a lot of transistors. I don't know if this works or anything, so it's going to be fun to uh, power it up. Um, we're going to do that in a second, but first we're going to investigate a little bit on the front and uh, on the back. There is the rear view. Look at this voltage selector. Isn't that just fantastic? So the idea is you unplug this one and then you simply point it to the voltage you got. Isn't this just amazing? And if you look up the manual, you'll be able to see how those are uh, the different pins they are connected together so i'm gonna see if i can plug it into 230 and then let's power it up and see what happens all right so we got 230 input and uh, no current usage and i believe we need to turn 50 watts 30 watts 26 24 so it's definitely something is going on let's crank up here Ooh, did you hear that that can't be good i heard a spark hmm So far, <laughs> nothing. Ooh, I was jumpy, jumpy. Trick, internal trick, auto trick. No, still 20 watt, 19, 20 watts. We don't see anything. What am I doing wrong here? Trick, internal trick. So, we don't see anything here. Oh, we also have a focus. Hmm. I am not able to see any fancy green. No luck so far. So that was disappointing. I will, of course... Come back in a second if I am able to figure this out. Look at that. Yay! I am able to get <laughs> something on the screen. But oh my god, this is the most dodgy scope that I have ever tried to play with. The trigger here is just impossible to work with. So far I got um, a decent picture. But look at this. So this is the trigger level. And then something with stability. It just makes the picture just go crazy. And then again, now with stability wrong, your trigger level is not working. So that needs to be right. And then this one needs to be right. And it's just absolutely impossible to work with. I don't know. What the heck is going on here? So, yeah. So that was definitely the brightness and focus. So far, so good. And yeah, this is the shift. And then you can you can gain if you want to. So you got a variable time base for something. 
and obviously the DC offset here of the channel one. And again, a variable. Yeah, and a variable here. And, and the fun thing is this offset here is also affected by your gain. So now it's ooh, much more crazy. Well, that's a little bit funny how it's merged together somehow. But well, it seems to be working, but it's just really, really not good in any way. I really don't like it. <laughs> also, uh, well, it's this is maybe how it was. I don't know. Was it really that bad? I can't remember it being that bad, but I... Yeah. Anyway, the Tele equipment looks a little bit like a Tektronics, right? So, if you didn't know any better oh yeah it started with t and it looks a little bit like that and they're trying to make it look like a tektronics with the red knobs and everything here and the yeah the colors and the placements and the the push buttons oh see we can even invert that is working <laughs> anyway let's see what is inside this ugly one okay it's probably gonna be something fantastic so the four screws for the scale that was easy to remove. So scale illumination is of course some bulbs. One is dead. The other one is working. And the brightness for this is on the on the rear. So now we can clean it up and make it look real nice and fine. Still trying to figure out how to open this thing. So okay, the handle needs to get off. The rear plate or the real rear cover then you can see the back side of the tube and then i guess we need to take these off yeah this is how it is and yes i think we're in see. those are the tabs that locks the sides Uh huh. Plenty of space. Handle with care. We need to do that. No knocking. Ooh. Everything here is a little bit flimsy. We try to keep the weight down. This is definitely not HP. <laughs> then it would have been a solid steel casting <laughs> of course it is a little bit dirty ay, 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 ay. it's very dirty so this is typical all those high voltage parts they kind of suck um, dust particles so I will uh, just go and blow a little bit of compressed air on this one so it's gonna be, be real nice and clean again where are the tubes? I was expecting to see a little tube or something. Because I thought I saw this in the schematic somewhere. Oh, look at that one. Oh, it's nearly falling out from a socket. How funny is that? So transistors in a... Okay, those are glued in, but this, those are sockets, right? Really cool. I need to look a little bit more into that. But where are the tubes? Come no. Reveal yourselves. Maybe the schematic that I found was an earlier model. It must have been because I really don't see any tubes anywhere. Nope. Okay, we are back with after some cleaning. Look what I found. A little secret handwritten note. Maybe some initials or some names. But yeah, now it is nice and clean. Just like new. Fantastic. But yes, 
transistors are indeed in sockets and you gotta see this wow what exactly is that <laughs> oh, that is nasty this is the don't touch thingy but other than that yeah all the transistors there are in sockets see you can just take and out you go and you can put it back again that is really really cool so obviously you need to think about this as being a unit that was designed just after the tube era right where everything needed to be in sockets so you could just pull out the defect one Go buy a new one. Ooh, they're expensive parts. And then stick a new one in. And it's repaired. I'm a little bit worried about why is this sitting a half a meter up. But yeah. A little four pin thingy. I bet if we take them all out and just swap them randomly we're going to see some funny things happening <laughs> oh yes look at those high voltage diodes that is really nice but anyway I'm, I don't dare to touch any of this because it was powered up uh, like 10 minutes ago so it could be a bad idea to touch anything, but I don't see any leaked uh, capacitors or anything really bad. I just believe this scope wasn't really super duper good when it comes to trigger. So beside this, uh, the a little bit weirdo trigger, uh, the scope seems to be quite all right. It, it works, of course, but i don't really need this for anything it was fun to to look at it and to show you guys what it consists of not much actually so this is the input alternator with the trimmer capacitors over all the different voltage dividers so you can trim it for best uh, performance and down here we got the it's difficult to see but this is the time base full of capacitors and stuff and also some components down there yep that is it that is really what i wanted to show you a super duper fast teardown video what i really like the most is the voltage selector that is super super nice ah <laughs> that is so cool all those opportunities Ooh, you can really select a lot of different voltages. Don't you just like that? Ah, I just wanted to play a little bit more with this before I throw it out. I actually uh, found out uh, a little bit more about the stability and the trigger. So, uh, so this is a uh, 13 hertz of input, and I'm running the time base in the absolute fastest. All right. So let's crank up uh, the input. So it's 20 hertz. Two hundred. Let's just go. Two kilohertz. And then 20 kilohertz. Now we see some stuff, right? Two hundred kilohertz. That's one megahertz. Look at that picture. Isn't that just beautiful? So this is one megahertz, and it's, did you notice the level is the same all the way, right? So that was one megahertz. Two, three, four. Oh, it's getting weaker, right? See, if this is one megahertz, I don't know if you can see the 
Can you see the scale on the video? I don't know if that is possible. Maybe I should... Okay, you can see the scale now, right? So this is 1 megahertz. 2, 3, 4, 5, 7, 8, 9, 10. I believe this is 0.7. I need to play a little bit with the trigger here. So this, this one can barely trick on 10 megahertz and the scale or the level is minus 3 dB volts. So yeah, it's a 10 megahertz scope and it's still doing that. It's really showing 1 megahertz really, really nice. So if this is 1 megahertz, let's just crank it down again to 100 kilohertz. And then let's try with the time base. See then, the trigger is a little bit weird. Is it because... You see? Depending on time base, there are some, <laughs> some odd things happening. I haven't really figured this out. So this has nothing to do with the trigger, but something with the stability. And then you move this. Whoops. I, I don't understand what is that exactly. And then there's nothing. One or two. And then see. It is really, really weird. This stability thing. So if you want to have an input signal, let's try and turn off the up. Yeah, okay, good. So that means stability must be cranked all the way up. And then you can... Get your picture. Okay, it's intrigued. Okay, and then you get only one. So what if we have one now? Okay. So it is a trigger thing. Okay, great. So I'm starting to like it, liking uh, this thingy a little bit more. It's not as bad as I th first uh, thought. The the more I play with the switches, the better it actually becomes it was full of see all this but then just move it a little bit and then see now it's nice and good and this one again i think this is uh, partly uh, a trigger thing see the level works nice and fine but the trigger is very very sensitive to signal level and oh that was the that was the thing yeah oh, I don't know about this <laughs> I don't know it's just full of old boogers I guess all right so I think this will be another thank you <laughs> and have fun